Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about Obelia colony structure. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So, what is Obelia? So, in our previous lecture, we have seen that Nigeria is an important phylum of animal kingdom, and Obelia is the member of Nigeria. So we will see its structure. So basically, Obelia is trimorphic colony. Tri means three. Morphic name comes from uh, the word morphology. So they have actually three kinds of structures, or you can say zooid, which are as follows. Three structures are polyps or hydrants, gonangia or blastostyle, and medusa. So polyps are also called nutritive zooids, gonangia are also called budding zooids, medusa are also called sexual zooids. So there are three types of structures, three forms are there in Ovelia colony. And each one of them has different functions. So we will see about them. First one is, uh, okay, first let's talk about the whole colony. So this is the whole colony. You can see here, this is the whole colony. Now, each colony of Ovelia consists of a thread-like root called hydrorhiza. This is animal, right? This is not a plant. That's why. It's not root, but it's thread-like, root-like structure. This is the hydrorhiza. I'm talking about this. So this is the root-like structure and that is attached to the substratum. So just like the root of the plant, hydrorhiza attaches the whole colony to the substratum. Oh. Next, from hydrorhiza arises a stem which is known as hydrocolus. From this root like structure, one more stem like structure arises that is hydrocolus. So, this is the stem like structure hydrocolus. It arises from hydrorhiza. The hydrocolus bears zooids. So, I have already said that three types of zooids you can see here. So, these three kinds of zooids are found in this hydrocolus whole system structure. Each polyp has a stem and a head called hydrant. So we are directly talking about polyp. Three zooids are there. First one is polyp. So now we are talking about this polyp. This is the polyp structure. You can see here this is the polyp structure. Okay. So it has a stem. So this is the stem of the polyp. And it has a head. This is the head of the polyp. This is the head of the polyp that is known as hydrant. So what is hydrant? Hydrant is nothing but the head of the polyp. And polyps are tubular. You can see this is the tubular structure, tube-like structure like this. And it is equipped with a mouth and tentacle. So it has the mouth. This is the, uh, here is the mouth. Here is the mouth. And tentacles are there in polyp. Okay. And tentacles are basically responsible for capturing prey and digestion. So these tentacles capture the prey and help in the digestion process. And they feed by capturing minute animals and larvae. So what they capture? They capture minute animals and larvae. That is why it is called, you can see here, it is called nutritive zooid. Because it helps in the nutrition. So, polyp structure is over. Okay. Uh, now, before coming to the next structure that is gonangia, we will talk about one more thing that is perisarc. So, the entire colony is covered by chitin known as perisarc. So, here you can see that uh, uh, this is perisarc. Actually, this means the whole structure, the whole structure is covered by the chitin and that is called perisarc. 
So the perisarc or chitin is present in the outside of the whole structure. It is present in the surface of the whole structure. And the perisarc around the gonangia is called gonotheca. So now I am talking about the next structure that is gonangia. So first let me see which is gonangia. So this structure is gonangia. You can see this is gonangia. Okay. So the perisarc which covers the whole animal body, it also covers the gonangia but here the name is different so the perisarc around the gonangia is called gonotheca so this is gonotheca this is the outside surface of gonangia so uh, gonotheca is nothing but the perisarc only but it is present around the gonangia hence it is named gonotheca now gonangia has no mouth or tentacles so unlike poly, gonangia does not have any mouth or tentacles. Now buds form in gonangia that develop into medusa. So here you can see in this gonangia, no, uh, buds will form like this. And those buds will become medusa. That's why the gonangia is known as budding zooids because they will make the buds. Okay. Uh, and those buds will become medusae then. So the third structure is medusae. So basically these medusae uh, are originated in the gonangia. Okay. Now the gonotheca opens by a gonopore through which the medusa escape. Okay. So he, this is the gonopore structure. Gonopore is basically nothing but the opening of the gonangia. So these buds which are uh, formed inside the gonangia, they will become medusae. You can see here I have mentioned that medusa buds. So these medusa buds are generated in the gonangia itself. And after maturation, they will come through this, uh, through this pore that is gonopore. And then here there the emerging medusa. So these medusa will come through the gonopore which are uh, then medusa will swim freely on the water okay, and we know that these this is the medusa you can see and they will swim freely in the water so basically these are three types of structures which are found in ovelia colony so this is all about today's lecture i hope you liked the lecture thank you for watching my video